Hello and welcome to Symmetry's Revit 2022 new features video. My name is Terry Dean. I'm one of the application specialists here at Symmetry. I will be informing you about some of the new features to be introduced within Revit 2022. The first new feature I'm going to focus upon will be 3D grids. Levels have been visible within a 3D view for a while now. Their visibility controlled via the Visibility Graphics dialog box. So within the Annotation Categories tab, I can come down here and turn off levels. Grids can now be made visible within a 3D view, but their visibility is controlled via the Properties palette. Within the Graphics section, there is an option called Show Grids, and if I select the grey button called Edit, it will list the levels available to this project. This method of controlling the grid visibility, compared with how the visibility of levels are controlled, has the advantage of only displaying the grids assigned to specific levels. This prevents overloading the view with grid lines. I'll make the grid lines visible for level 0 only. Now they are visible in 3D, when selected, they display a plane. Each end of this plane has a circular drag control, and when enabled, will allow me to either lengthen or shorten the grid line. It is worth noting that within the plan view, only that grid line is being manipulated, and also obviously in 3D. I'll just undo what I've just done. However, if I carry out the same procedure in the plan view, the grid lines will stretch together because they are constrained at the same time. So that's default behaviour. The next new feature I'm going to focus upon will be tapered walls. But before I do, I'll remind you of something which was introduced within Revit 2021, the ability to construct slanted walls. This feature has been enhanced to allow the slanted wall's profile to be edited. So now, if a slanted wall is selected, the Edit Profile tool is available from within the contextual ribbon. And we have the same capabilities we have for straight vertical walls. So if I now click on this slanted wall, I have access up on the ribbon to Edit Profile, and I can now begin to edit the profile of this wall as before and I can also add loops within loops and when I click finish edit mode we get that result. Okay now let's look at tapered walls. For your information slanted walls cannot be tapered. I'll begin by tapering walls using their type properties. I'll select one of these vertical walls and within the properties palette select edit type. From within this dialog box next to structure I'll select edit. So I've now opened up the edit assembly dialog box. It's worthwhile noting that there now is an additional column called variable and I can choose one of these layers to be the tapered layer. So I'm going to select the structure layer and then click OK. Back within this dialog box, within the cross section properties area, I'm going to set the exterior angle and the interior angle to two degrees. And then pick OK. The straight vertical walls appear unchanged. It's because the walls must have their cross-section instance parameter changed to tapered. So over here within the properties palette, constraint section, adjacent to cross-section, I'm going to change it from vertical to tapered. And we now see that the wall I had selected has now changed to a tapered wall. I now need to select the other vertical wall and change its parameter adjacent to cross-section to tapered also. 
and I'll now select an empty space to deselect. Both walls are using the type properties parameter of two degrees. So I'm now going to change one of these walls independently. So I'll select this one. So to change it independently, so not using the type properties, I come over to the properties palette again and enable the override type properties tick box and I'll change both the exterior angle and the interior angle to four degrees. And just that wall will update. Once again, I'll deselect by clicking in an empty space. If I actually want to show which of the layers has tapered, I'm going to convert both of these walls into parts. So by selecting the two walls, I'll choose create parts, deselect, and then when we zoom in, we can see that it's the structure layer that has the taper applied. The next new feature I'm going to focus upon will be wall core display. Multi-layered walls or compound walls within Revit have always consisted of layers assigned to various functions. For example, finishes, substrate, membrane, thermal stroke air layer, and structure, the core layer. If the requirement is to view only the structural core of walls, only layers within the core boundary, this has now been made very simple to achieve. There is now a wall subcategory within the visibility graphics dialog box called non-core layers. Once unchecked, only the structural core will be displayed within the current view. So I'll go up to the view tab, select visibility graphics, scroll down to the walls category, expand so I can see the subcategories, and we now have this new subcategory called non-core layers. So if I uncheck that and click OK, we instantly see that we're now left with those core boundaries, those core layers. And if I undo a couple of times and then redo, we can see that that is actually being applied. The next new feature I'm going to focus upon will be multi-leader tags. I'll follow this by showing how within Revit 2022, tags can now be rotated. Previously when tagging, we had to tag every object individually with its own tag. We can now tag multiple elements with multiple leaders using a single tag. So I'll show how that's done with these windows. So if I choose tag by category, we now see that we have this new add remove host option, which can either be disabled, which it now is, or enabled. That can be done either at the same time as untagging from the beginning. That can be used at this point, now I'm actually tagging, or it can be used post tagging. So if I've already tagged and I want to add additional multi-leaders, I can, and I'll demonstrate that. So to begin with, we'll tag these windows. So move the tag down there, click on there, Click on there, and we can see we're getting this multi leader pointing to those windows. I'll just cancel that tool and do the same for the doors. So I'll choose tag by category, that is enabled. Click on that door, place the tag, click on that door. What I'll now demonstrate is the ability to add further leaders if additional items have been added. So if I select this door, create similar and choose to insert that door further along that wall, I can now choose this tag, instruct it that I want to use the add remove host option and that will allow me to select this door here. And there we are. It shows us how we can now use this multi-leader tag function. Now, within Revit 2022, tags can be rotated after they've been inserted, either on mass or individually. 
I'll begin by showing how to rotate multiple tags simultaneously. So I'll do a selection window around all of the available tags and then filter some of them out. So I'll just choose door tags and window tags and click OK. What we now have in the properties palette is the ability to specify an angle for those. So I'm going to type in 20 and when I move my cursor back into the graphics area you can see that the door and window tags have rotated. So I'll now show how to rotate individual tags. The two room tags need rotating. So if I select this one individually, I can use the same process to change the angle. So in the properties palette, I change that to 20 degrees and that instantly changes. But we can also use, if required, the rotate command. So if I select this tag and simply use the rotate command like so, and then I can rotate that round at 20 degrees. So there we are. The frustration of not being able to rotate tags is now a thing of the past. The next new feature I'm going to focus upon will be split schedules. Previously, when a schedule was placed upon a sheet and it required splitting, none of the split segments could be placed upon additional sheets. Now they can. So after initially dragging and dropping the door schedule onto a sheet, then splitting it, any of the split segments can be copied or cut and pasted onto another sheet. So I'll do that. So I'll drag the door schedule onto this sheet. And having placed it, I'll split it in the normal way. And I'll select the right hand segment and cut to the clipboard and then paste that onto the other sheet. So I'll paste it there like so and just choose finish up here on the ribbon. Now if we look in the browser, the browser reflects what has occurred. So if I look at the building door schedule, we can see we've got two uh, copies of it. And if I look at expand both sheets, we can see that those two copies have been placed onto their respective sheets. To show an alternative method of achieving this, but in a more automated way, I'll delete the existing references within the browser. This time, the split segments will be automatically placed on multiple sheets in the same location. To achieve that, if I right click on building door schedule in the browser and choose split and place. In this dialog box, I can choose which sheets I want the schedule to be split and placed, as well as how I want the split to occur, either split evenly or custom split, where a height can be specified. So I'll choose these two sheets. And we'll notice that down here at the bottom, it says that schedule segments will be placed in the same position across selected sheets. So I'll now choose the split and place button. What I now need to do is place this segment on this sheet and the evenly split segment has now been placed in the same location on the other sheet. Once again, the project browser reflects what has occurred, as we can see. The first new feature I'm going to focus upon will be the PDF exporter. It is no longer a requirement to print to a PDF. Instead, they can be created by exporting. The exporter has its own dialog box. We go to the File tab, Export, PDF. And we can see that it's very similar to the Plot dialog box. 
I have already created a set of files to be exported. So if I select selected views and sheets, and if I click on the button at the end here, we can see we've got these four sheets in readiness to be exported. One notable setting is the ability to export to numerous sheets, where each sheet can be built from parameters allowing for a more complex naming convention. So we can use these parameters in here to make up the actual name of the file itself. And we can see here that I can actually print them as separate files rather than to a single PDF. And it's here that I can direct the PDFs to a designated folder. Once configured, the export setup can be saved and restored for future exports. This saved export not only captures the naming convention, but any other settings chosen within the dialog box like size, paper placement, orientation, appearance, etc. I'll now execute the export. And as we can see in the designated folder, the parameters which I configured are now being used to name the PDF files. Well, that concludes this Revit 2022 new features video. I hope you found it useful. Look out for our other videos for other 2022 products on our website. Thank you for watching. Thank you.